Hey everyone, we're here to you now with a very special segment. Uh, you know what time it is. You gotta crack open a cold one. You gotta, gotta open up a cold one, get yourself some nice chocolate starfish, and get yourself a nice cold glass of hot dog flavored water because it's fucking Bread Durst Friday. Yeah, flip that baseball cap around and get that middle finger ready and and, and, and we're gonna break some stuff put in those devil contacts because you're uh, west borland and <laughs> it's your friend's day and you know what just like the vocalist of taproot after you turned down a lucrative record deal from fred durst we're gonna drop some fucking bang ass fred durst knowledge on you know i do have to say it's kind of strange given how like normie fred durst is the way it just uh, Wes Borland decided to dress for that band all the time. <laughs> like it is I, I like, I fuck with it though. I like it a lot. Yeah, it is. It is pretty neat. And eventually, guys, we are going to do a Wes Borland Wednesday bracket. Uh huh. And Fred Durst isn't actually normie. He's just making a statement on normie culture by having Jinko jeans and baseball hat. <laughs> oh, I see. And wearing the ugliest '90s skate shoes. Right. While like grinding on Christine Aguilera and Britney Spears at the 2000 or 1999 VMA Awards. Yeah, he he wore a lot of etnies. Petting oh. these nuts. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Is but, that kind of like Ligma? <laughs> yeah. I will say, though, today on Fred Durst Friday, we will be reviewing two cameos that Fred Durst made. The first we're going to be talking about is uh, Fred Durst's very long and illustrious cameo in the 2001 Ben Stiller film, Zoolander. Yes. Uh, he's in quite a bit of this movie. He's integral. He's fire. very integral. And do you guys know the context of the scene that we're going to be talking about in the movie Zoolander? Yeah, but um, I don't remember him talking about Nirvana at all. You said he's really integral. <laughs> I don't remember him talking about calculus. <laughs> yes. he's, it's, it's, this movie is very, like, subformed. <laughs> it's very in utero. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Uh, well, but see, no, in, in, never mind. In, in, we'll in, in this, in this scene... Derek Zoolander is about to kill the, was it the prime minister of Micronesia? Uh, I, that sounds right. I think it's either Micronesia or like, uh, uh, yeah, something like it's, it's, it's some like random, like Pacific Island country yeah. because Mugatu Mugatu Will Ferrell's character. Yes. Wants to set up a bunch of sweatshops in Micronesia. Yes. And, mm. and Derek Zoolander is basically like fucking like, um, MK ultra. It's like MK, MK Ultra, Ultra and, <laughs> and like CIA program like idea to like kill the Prime Minister of Micronesia mm -hmm. to help set up some like Banana Republic shit in Micronesia. I was not aware of this. I think when I last saw Zoolander, I was like eight or nine years old. <laughs> so, uh, and in this scene, Zoolander to is. Be fair, I just watched the Fred Durst cameos, guys. Yeah, I, didn't yeah. watch the I mean, that's um, the only uh, integral part. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. But in this in this scene, Zoolander is basically getting the trigger to kill Mugatu, and that is listening to the song Relax by Freddy Goes to Hollywood. Or no, it's Frankie Goes to Hollywood, right? Frankie, yeah. Frankie Goes to Hollywood. Yeah, Freddy, Freddy, Fred Durst Goes to Hollywood. <laughs> Freddy say relax. Relax, just do it when you want to get nooky. You know, that's yeah, how the song went. Right? Exactly. Um, and that's how much and Freddy Goes to Hollywood. in the scene, Zoolander is having a monologue to himself. He's like, don't look at the beautiful celebrities. And the first beautiful celebrity that shows up is our boy Fred Durst. Oof, and he is that, gorgeous, mm -hmm, followed really by, of is. course, very infamously beautiful celebrity Little Kim. Mm -hmm. Little gorgeous, Kim nowadays but... is fuck. I mean, she's not weird looking at all. She's very normal very well. looking woman. And then after that, it's Lance Bass, and he gives like a hell yeah, like nice like finger finger point, like yeah, Ben Stiller, I'm gonna fuck you later because I mean I'm still in the closet, but I'll fuck you. Yeah, so, I mean because Lance Bass was still in the closet when this movie came out. Weren't we all? Yeah. And then Gary Shandling, to to be fair, he's like, you and know what, Ben Stiller, I'm also going to suck your dick. And he afterwards. was uh, still alive at this. Time, yeah, yeah, because Gary, unfortunately, he met a, he met uh, he met his end after he turned down Lance Bass's uh, advances. <laughs> <laughs> and then he became undead and became Gary Shambling. Oh, come on. But I will say that I stole scene, that joke from Dan. But I'm not gonna you know what, Jess? <laughs> You're no longer a producer. <laughs> like Dave usually gets fired. Now you're fired. Oh, right? this yeah. is not Dan Harmon has to get. This is a Starburns podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is a Starburst podcast. Talk about Ooh. the best candy ever. Mm -hmm. um, but no, I think this. I think Zoolander is kind of a bad movie because Fred Durst is in it for literally two seconds. Yeah, he doesn't even have any speaking lines. I think that's a huge disservice to Fred Durst. Yes, yeah, so yeah. that's why I prefer the director's cut where he uh, actually plays a full concert. Uh, yeah at this part i yeah. believe yeah. which by the way speaking of another fun uh fred durst and limp biscuit fact 
during uh, Limp Bizkit's Family Value tour and like their original three dollar uh-huh. bill tour. When they would come out on stage, they would literally jump out of a giant like fake stage toilet. That's to well, come that's out and then play the cool. instrument. That's <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, and that's uh, actually after seeing that. Um, that's, uh, when Metallica formed and recorded metal up your ass. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. They were inspired by the toilet. I had no idea that they were, I thought, you know, Metallica started in like 83 or wherever. That's, the that's, fuck. that's, that's, <laughs> the, that's the lies that the, that the main, the lamestream media tells you. Yeah. LSM. <laughs> yeah. Like, so yeah, that, I think Zoolander is a bad movie to talk about cause there's just so little Fred Durst in it. And I think yeah. it, I'm going to give it a solid zero out of 10 quality wise. The, uh, the quality cameo, wise, 10 out of 10. I, I gotta say, I don't know that cameo. He gives a nice little smirk. It's got a good camera angle. I got to give it at least a two out of 10 for that. Yeah. Yeah. I will say he does have good facial expressions. So, I, okay. I'll give it like a point or two just for the facial expressions, but I really wanted some Fred Durst fucking verses, dude. Yeah. It would have been nice if you dropped a verse, but you know, like, we take what we can get, and, you know, we got a little bit of a smirk. And, yeah, and you can uh, tell he was holding back from, like, spitting hot rhymes the whole time, just sitting there, like, mm-hmm. wanting to, you know, bust out into it, but yeah. being suppressed. He was holding back his chainsaw. <laughs> yeah. <he's, laughs> he wasn't rolling, rolling in that scene. He was very, like, just parked, stationary, neutral. He was not really doing a whole lot. Yeah, he was, uh, he got a parking ticket from... <laughs> Lincoln Park. <laughs> ah, <laughs> They're kind of oh, new shit. metal, right? <laughs> I mean that. I mean, Hybrid Theory is definitely a new metal album, yeah. and Meteora to a certain extent too. But yeah. But the next cameo we're going to be talking about is a much more substantive one, which is from Pauly Shore is Dead. Mm-hmm. Now, nice. in this cameo, which I've not, I, I mean, I, I have seen uh, many, many times. Pauly Shore is Dead. In this scene, Pauly Shore is. Kind of just hanging around Los Angeles because, like, I'm cool. I'm Pauly Shore. Everyone knows who the fuck I am. He's just wheezing the juice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he runs into a one of those, like, annoying vendor, like, street guys. Like, hey, look, listen to my CD, dude. But played by Fred Durst. And, and what CD could it be? And I don't know. It could have been $3 bill. And he's like, yo, yo, Pauly, you want to listen to my CD? And just, like, you know, show it around real quick. And Pauly Shore is like, oh, who the fuck do you think I am? You think I'm just going to show around my CD to you, you fucking loser, piece of shit? And I didn't like that because you should never disrespect Fred Durst. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it is kind of annoying to see him get so blatantly disrespected. Um, yeah, and he also makes fun of his fucking name. He's like, oh, your name's Fred? Yeah, what are you, fucking Fred Flintstone? Now listen, bitch. First off, you do not insult Fred Durst. And second off, that's a lame fucking joke. Yeah, that's that's sucks. a really lame joke. That's really fucking subpar. Like yeah. I the only time to call someone Fred Flintstone is if they're like pushing their car, or, like walking it, you know. Yeah. Or like they have Or if he says like Yabba Dabba Doom, maybe their, their car mm-hmm. tips over at the drive thru because the ribs they ordered are so big. Or mm-hmm. maybe he has a kid named Bam who later ended up being Bam Margera that maybe yeah, and, the, and oh, wait, the kid hold on. just destroyed his house. You know? Are we breaking the story? Is Bam Margera Fred Flintstone's son? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Remember that episode of Viva La Bam uh, where he put Fred Flintstone on a billboard and t- said, nobody feed Fred? Well, I was saying maybe, maybe it could also no. make sense if Fred Durst was <laughs> friends with, with Barney from Napalm Death, then maybe that might make sense. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that but, dad in the show was always, huh. Oh. And then also, and Fred Flintstone he's like, is John Goodman. <laughs> That's true. But also, like, fucking Pauly Shore is like, oh, Limp Biscuit. What is that fucking limp dick? Mm. And it's like, dude, come on, man. You can do better. You're, fu- yeah. as we all know, Pauly Shore is infamously much funnier than that. Yeah. Yes. And he's- first of all, you're making a dick joke about something that's already a dick joke. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's just redundant, dude. Yeah. And yeah. then you know what he does? He slaps a CD on the ground. By the way, that was the very first copy of $3 Bill. So that album was probably worth like $5 trillion. Yeah. And he just smacked. That very first, that was a master of that CD. That was a master that copy. Was, he broke that on the streets he, of Los Angeles. They had even, to re-record the whole he album. Yeah, that was all up they had. <laughs> um, but yeah. No, and, well, to be fair, that's what the song Counterfeit was about, because they had to make counterfeit copies of that <laughs> album. <laughs> and so when I saw this cameo, and I see Pauly Shore being rude to Fred Durst, right? And then I look over, and I look over, and there's, I look at the title of the movie. And the, movie, the title of the movie, it says, Pauly Shore is dead. And I think to myself, good. Yeah, because yeah, he insulted Fred Durst that much. And then Fred Durst justifiably walks away being like, man, fuck you. Yeah. yeah. Fuck you. 
I, I like his piece of shit. His, his voice almost kind of cracks in that that Fred Burst manner that I quite like. And it was know, to, to be fair, character. he did he did say an anti gay slur, but I will accept yeah, it he because did use it was the F slur. But it was it was to be fair, Paulie Shore did a massive unjustifiable takedown of one of the greatest artists of the 20th century. I can understand his anger, and I understand that this was, you know... It was a heat of the moment in a different time. time. Yeah. yeah, a different time, 2006. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah. honestly, the only reason he used that slur as an insult um, is because he knew that it would cut to Pauly Shore's core because he hates gay people so much. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So... And I will say Pauly Shore is dead is slightly better because it's got more Fred Durst, but there's a lot more insulting towards him. So mm-hmm. I don't really know if I'd rank it higher than Tua. I might give it like a 2.53 me. It but had more Fred Durst. I'll say that much, and that makes it good. This actually had more Fred Durst than that CarMax commercial. It did! So, like, you have to give it a little something. There. Actually, you know what's funny but- is that this... This cameo had more Fred Durst than every single Fred Durst Friday thing we've talked about so far. This yeah, is has, this is the most Durst uh, collectively Wait, that we've seen. How long was his verse in Bleed? Oh, uh, it was like 20 seconds long. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I will say that this cameo was very interesting, although I did I did not think it was very appropriate to say to such a living legend. Yeah, it's yeah. true. But, but on I, the other I, hand, uh, it makes you wonder, like, uh, maybe this incident is what inspired Fred Durst to go and be good at music you know the thing because sometimes you just get like such a reality check from such a piece of shit that you're just like you know what i'm gonna be fucking better than you i'm gonna teach you a fucking lesson and i'm gonna make you eat your fucking words yeah, yeah. And, and that's when he created the verse from the song sour mm-hmm. it yeah. really lit a fire under his ass to get mm-hmm. him to you it's know. like the guy the video of that guy who comes out and is screaming at people uh playing saxophone on the side of the street um because yeah. it's not you trash enough. yeah and who the who are you? Uh, uh, what is I don't it? know that I'm he familiar says, uh, with this video. Uh, silence is the foundation of creativity, or something like that. We should show you that video later. Uh, sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, so, but no, I, I will say though too. There's another funny reference that you might not have got, where he says uh, to Pauly Shore, "Is like I'm never gonna feature you one of my music videos." Which, if you didn't know, Pauly Shore w- did have a cameo in the Break Stuff music video. Oh. See, I, yes. I must have missed him. Along I, with, I know, like, fucking, yeah, along with Dr. Dre and Jonathan Davis. Dr. And, Dre, Jonathan Davis, Eminem's in there. Yeah. Uh, I think Carson Daly's in there at some point, too. Yeah, how many people are, who, I'm, I'm just going to Google this, who all is in Break Stuff video? <laughs> Lot people. There's, yeah, and I, they did There's a girl open, flashes herself at some point. She's famous now, I think. Uh, oh, <laughs> and she should be. Uh, they did an open casting call for like uh, celebrities who assault women, and then that's when they found Dr. Dre and Eminem. And uh, wait, Roger Daltrey is in that video? Yeah, yeah, probably him too. Yeah, there's a lot of people in the break stuff music. I mean, that literally was like the biggest. Eminem's music video daughter ever. Haley. That's true. Alec Baldwin, Derek Jeter, Roger Daltrey, Bam Margera. Oh, we're talking about Bam. <laughs> Hell yeah! <laughs> Bucky Lasik, Seth Green, Striker. I do remember Seth Green from that music video. I haven't seen it since high school, probably. And Flea and model Lily Aldridge and comedian. And also, by the way, um, uh, Bowling for Soup. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That was the that was the rip off when they ripped off that music video uh, for the girl for... the bad guys want. Yes. So uh, I don't remember any Bowling for Soup except for 1985, honestly. Which was originally recorded by uh, SR71. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Stevie Ray Vaughan. Yeah, yes. Stevie Ray Vaughan, se- the 71. Uh, yeah. 71 inch. Stevie, Stevie Ray, Ray 71. Vaughan. Uh, uh, but I should say, do you think we should get to the voting? Yeah. 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 All right. So I'll do the countdown. All right. Three, two, three, one. Two, <laughs> one. Polly Shore, 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 Shore is dead. Is dead. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Because like, even though it was more insulting, there was just more Fred Durst. It's, it's just true. more bang for your buck. Exactly. Yeah, it's because we both bought these movies for the maximum price, and we watched all these cameos a million times. Yeah, I actually just mm-hmm. bought the one scene. Uh, yeah. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I, I mean, found I found what? just the cameo on YouTube, and then I went to the guy's page, and I like just bet about him twenty yeah. bucks. Yeah, you went to like the the Apple Store equivalent, but for music scenes, you pay like five bucks just yeah. for that one scene. Yeah, and the the movies are broken down into tracks so like oh, if you okay. don't want if you don't want to watch three hours of heat you can you know just get disc two <laughs> yeah 
Yeah. yeah. Well, that's good so, to know. <laughs> Pauly Shore is dead. But yeah, really Paul, the Pauly Shore is dead. We'll move forward into the bracket. And uh, what, what's uh, coming up next in this bracket? Do I do not know? have the bracket up in front. Mm. But uh, me either. So I'm going to say uh, um, the Stain song. Uh, no, you're right. It is It is Stained no, uh, gonna... Outside featuring Fred Durst, the live version, the in, live version. recorded in Mississippi, Tupelo, yeah. Mississippi, I believe. Acoustically, and I think the corn song from uh, um, Follow, the, from Follow leader. the Leader, all, all in, in the, the family. family. <laughs> yes. Which, by the way, that is going to be a fun motherfucking episode because both those songs are really good. So, for All in the Family, oh, are we going to do the live version that they did together on stage? No, I just want to do the album track. Okay. okay. Now I'm looking. At <laughs> I can't I see through know. you. See Look. your true colors. We got to inside you're, you're ugly. You're ugly like me. <laughs> look, look, guys, we got to save that for next time. Okay, because that we're gonna want to sing it a lot. Then, all right. Yeah, um, it's unfortunate that um, that live version of Outside was recorded before uh, Aaron Lewis from Stained uh, started doing solo live performances and going on tirades um, about Barack Obama. Because uh, that would have uh, made that track a lot funnier. Because I'm on the outside of modern political discourse. <laughs> exactly. I did not know that he did that, but it kind of oh, lines yeah. up for uh, most Aaron of Aaron Lewis is a huge, fans. like, chud. Gigantic yeah, he, chud. He, uh, he basically is a country artist now, and he really plays to his audience. Uh, yes, so. he does. Yeah, it's basically like Ted Nugent for president. I feel yeah. like that's happened with every kind of like, you know, all of those bands that were somewhere between like metal and post grunge type thing. Or, yeah. or, well, or I mean, the I think a lot band. of them I ended up libertarians, too. So mm -hmm. like Jonathan Davis, is a big libertarian. Oh, is really? He? Yeah, I didn't know that's that. fucking I'll fucking rip his dreads right out. I mean, we could talk about presidential preferences. I mean, you know, Nick Cage supported Yang. Oh, I actually didn't realize that. But I did not know that. I mean, so did Childish Gambino. So maybe the we're Yang Gang right now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, talk about G Force Gang. We're also Yang Gang. Yeah, I, the G Force I, Yang Gang. There's two things that I want, and I only have one. Well, it's UBI and UTI. <laughs> you know no, but the G Force Gang and Yang teamed up, so you get a thousand dollars every month to buy guinea pigs <laughs> to give to Richard Gere so he can shove them off his ass. A thousand dollars of guinea pigs every month. G-Force Yang, everybody. Yeah. Well, you know, guinea, guinea pigs are very social animals and it's actually illegal in the UK to have guinea pigs live in just by themselves. Um, so you yeah. need thousands of dollars worth of guinea pigs every month just to keep them not. Yeah, what yeah, happens when all of them but one die and you don't want more? Well, that's the thing. Talk about $1,000 every month, then you get $1,000 to buy more guinea pigs. Yes, uh, and if, if there's a rule there that um, if uh, you find a guinea pig in the wild, there's like a library uh, return style drop box uh, at Richard Gere's house. You just drop it right in there. Yeah, oh, you okay. drop it in. It's, it's, it's shaped very much like his intestines. Yeah, and it goes uh, right into uh, you know, his fucking butthole. So. <laughs> I think it was a hamster with <laughs> a guinea pig is pretty big. I, I mean, Richard Gere's asshole is you, pretty fucking wide from all this. You up to a guinea pig. <laughs> yeah, you start with a Yeah, hamster. you have to prep with the hamster and you eventually upgrade to the guinea pig. By yeah, now, okay. he's probably at fucking capybaras or some shit. <laughs> Um, he's probably up to boar. He's going to be up to a boar in like a month. Yeah. So next time, check out, out All in the Family and Outside. Outside, the live version recorded in Tupelo, Mississippi, so you can get Fred Durst. Mm -hmm. All in his glory. That specifically. Yeah. And by the way, what's really funny is that that's the only version of Outside that's still played on the radio, I believe. Yeah. Oh, really? It's yeah. Because so uh, it's also acoustic. It's a beautiful song. Absolutely beautiful. So it's like great said, when you have a guy singing harmonies, but it's the same. Definitely listen to that melody. because I know for a fact that's definitely what's in the next part of Fred Durst Friday, and I'm not just hoping that's what it is. I looked it up. It, it is. Because <laughs> I, I, I knew I was going to be excited for it, so I'm like, oh yeah, All in the Family and Outside Live, 100%, mm -hmm. yes. But definitely, l listen to All in the Family at least several times, because it's actually made about the TV show. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. So. It's, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> basically, basically summarizes the show so you can, instead of watching the whole thing, you can get it done in about three minutes, 47. All right, but uh, I think we're exiting Fred Durst Friday at this point. We're going to move on to Deadfall. Oh.